Professor Dan Jurjakas is co-editor of the Journal of the Hellenic Diaspora, a fellow of the American Hellenic Institute and director of the Greek American Studies Project at the Center for Byzantine and Modern Greek Studies of Queens College, City of New York. His most recent book is My Detroit, Growing Up Greek and American in Motor City. Please join me in welcoming Dan Jurjakas. Thank you very much for coming out on a <clears throat> rainy day. It's always great to be in Chicago. And uh, I know I'm in a Greek <clears throat> meeting when a, a poem uh, introduces the events. Um, like most of my, my talk today will be about Smyrna, but it'll be also be talk about the image of Turkey. And um, Turkey now is a great favorite among American politicians, American academics, and American journalists. Um, part of this is due to their tremendous uh, diplomatic efforts, funding of university programs, and what have you. And the argument is that her Turkey is an Islamic nation that should serve as a model for the new states coming out of the Arab Spring. Well, not only is this uh, view ill-informed, I think it's quite dangerous uh, for the United States. And I don't think it even serves the best long-term interests of Turkey. Um, echoing what has already been said, I think one of our duties as Hellenes and one of our duties as Americans is to set this record straight. So let's look back now and see uh, what happened in Smyrna uh, 79 years ago, and just as importantly, how those events are remembered. Uh, and when I say how they're remembered, how are they remembered in the United States, and how are they remembered in Turkey? One of the uh, problems the uh, uh, Turkish government, as far as I'm concerned, is they lie in their own textbooks to their own people. So that if you're a ninth grade, tenth grade student in Turkish school, you read these uh, biased accounts. So therefore, you create a misinformed population. Uh, very often, people say they go back to Greece uh, Greek goes back to Turkey, and the Turkish uh, average person saying, why did you leave? As if, oh, the Greeks decided to leave one day. In fact, there's a wonderful little movie about that, uh, where, where almost every Turk in the, in, the, in the movie honestly says, why did you leave? They, they really, their historical memory has been distorted. Um, now, the Turkish government admits that crimes were created in Smyrna. But it says they were mainly irregulars, did it? Uh, part of the fog of war, things happened during war. Uh, partly response to uh, Greek atrocities. Never, never is it because of governmental policy. Now, the, the same line is used for the Pontian uh, genocide, and the same line is used for the Armenian genocide. Well, George Horton, the American Consul General, in Smyrna, third party, was highly critical of how the Allies always appeased the Turks. And he wrote the following, Turkish massacres are always carried out by orders of superior authorities. This is a well-known principle in the way in which various historical massacres have been conducted abundantly proves it. Such was the case in Smyrna and Mustafa Kemal's <coughs> statement that he could not control his troops is false. Okay, that's the American Council. Um, the troops were retreating so rapidly and in such disarray that they could not protect anybody. And as the Turkish army began to come forward, uh, the atrocities <laughs> began. And um, it's pillage, it's rape, it's murder, it's arson. Um, the only thing Greek civilians could do at that point, and Armenian civilians, uh, would be to run. And basically, all paths led to the ports, and the port most people went to was Smyrna. They came in the thousands, and then in the tens of thousands, and by the end, there were about 100,000 people on the docks of Smyrna. Uh, the Turkish army entered Smyrna on September 9th, and the first thing they said was, all the ethnic minorities are going to be safe. And the first thing they did was to begin to pillage and uh, commit crimes against the ethnic minorities. 
On September 10th, Ataturk himself arrived, <coughs> took a nice house in the suburbs uh, with his general staff, and he would be in control of the city, which is very important, uh, for at least the next 30 days he was physically there. On September 12th, they issued an edict that any non-Turk who was in the city at the end of the month would be marched to the interior. Well, to be marched to the interior was like having a death march. You knew most people could not survive such a march. So this is a sentence of death. Uh, a day after uh, they announced that, the Armenian quarter suddenly went up in flames. And the city began to burn, and eventually all of Smyrna would burn, except for the Turkish quarter, which somehow the firemen kept the fire from going to the Turkish quarter. Now, Turkish authorities have always stated they did not start the fire. The Greeks started the fire, or the Armenians started the fire, because they were such nasty people, they didn't want the Turks to have their houses. So they, were, they burnt the houses so the Turks couldn't have them. Um, well, numerous Western observers, uh, I quote them, uh, Gustav Dimitrios' books out there, it's got pages of uh, Westerners, said, oh, well, we saw Turkish soldiers throwing kerosene on houses. We saw Turkish soldiers with torches setting the houses on fire. Um, the uh, uh, General Counsel Horton and the American Ambassador uh, Morgenthau both said the Turks started the fire. So I think the evidence is pretty strong that the Turks started the fire. But let's just say, let's be very open. Uh, the Turks could say that, well, why would we burn down such a prized city? Uh, the soldiers did this, the fire got out of hand, and we couldn't stop it. Possibly. Not likely, but possible. But what's absolutely clear is who's responsible for the death of the Metropolitan Christosimus. He was the Orthodox uh, prelate of Smyrna. Now, in the Ottoman system, the leading religious figure was the head of the community. So he de facto, as far as the Ottomans and Turks were concerned, was the leader of the Greek community. That's very important to, to remember. Uh, before the Turks arrived, he went to Horton's office. And Horton said he had a kind of a gray look on his face, as if he knew his days were limited. And, uh, uh, Hort said, uh, you should evacuate, and he said, I don't think I can. And then he went to the French, and the French ambassador said to him, you've got to evacuate because if they come, uh, they're going to kill you. And he said, I am a shepherd and must stay with my flock. So on September 10th, uh, which was the day that uh, Ataturk arrived in, uh, in Smyrna, two soldiers and an officer came to the cathedral where he was sitting, and they took him to the headquarters of General Nuradin, who was handpicked by Ataturk to run the city and who was the de facto commander of the city of Smyrna. The Metropolitan went. He was dubious of what would happen. They said, well, maybe they want to discuss the future of the Greek community in Smyrna. After all, this is the military commander. He'll tell me what I'm supposed to tell the people. What all accounts say is that he was in there for about 10 minutes with the general. Uh, and then the general appeared on the balcony. And he addressed between maybe about 1,500 Turkish uh, uh, people uh, in the balcony. And he said, we know the Metropolitan and Alternationalist. Do with him as you will. And they let the Metropolitan out. And the crowd pounced upon him and literally tore him apart, gouged out his eyes did his, all kinds of horrendous, horrendous things. Um, so the general in charge of the city had given his approval, and the army did not intervene. So this is an example where the Turkish government was responsible for the murder of the leader of the Greek community. No regular troops, no fog of war, no maybe something else very clear cut. Now, <clears throat> the martyrdom of the Metropolitan um, exposes something about the official slogan of Turkey. Uh, the uh, Kemal movement, Kemal movement, said Turkey for the Turks. But what does that mean? Turkey for the Turks could mean 
uh, foreign troops off our soil so that local residents can run themselves. 